Hello, my name is Neve Barry and I'm a speech and language therapy student and I'm going to talk about amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as ALS. ALS is a progressive degenerative motor neuron disease that primarily affects the motor neurons of the brain and the spinal cord. This means that it affects a person's ability to initiate and control muscle movements. ALS is sometimes referred to motor neuron disease with the average age of diagnosis being between the ages of 40 and 70 years old with men being affected 20% more often than women. The early symptoms of ALS are varied. For some people, it begins with speech slurring, difficulties with swallowing, and or hoarseness. Others may experience clumsiness or tripping. Difficulty lifting may be the initial symptom for others. Clinically, the signs and symptoms are divided into two areas, the spinal function and bulbar function. Three quarters of people report initial spinal symptoms weakness in the upper and or lower extremities and about one quarter present with bulbar symptoms weakness with changes in both speech and swallowing. Both upper and lower motor neurons become affected as the disease progresses. Although there is no definite cause of ALS there are many possible contributing factors. These include genetics, lifestyle, occupations or a history of traumatic brain injury. The diagnosis of ALS is made using clinical findings in conjunction with results of electrodiagnostic studies and the absence of evidence of other disorders. According to the Diagnostic Guidelines of the World Federation of Neurology in 1994, there must be lower motor neuron degeneration and upper motor neuron degeneration, as well as progressive signs of spread within a region of the body or to other regions. The prognosis for individuals diagnosed with ALS varies from person to person, but the average lifespan from time of diagnosis is 3 to 5 years. However, a number of factors contribute to prognosis. These can include the age of onset, classification of initial symptoms, and pulmonary function. Unfortunately, there is no cure for ALS. Management of the symptoms is key in ALS. This can include 1. Pharmacotherapy, the use of drugs such as really as well. Secondly, multidisciplinary team intervention, including team members such as OTs, dietitians and psychologists, and thirdly, speech and language therapy. The role of the SLT then. Perhaps the most devastating thought is the prospect of the loss of the ability to speak. Although current medical and rehabilitation technology cannot offer a way to prevent any of these losses, Speech language pathologists can assist individuals with ALS to maintain their ability to communicate using compensatory strategies and AAC, AAC aids and techniques. As speech intelligibility begins to decline, intervention focuses on maintaining functional communication versus attempting to reduce speech impairment. Direct speech intervention is not recommended for a number of reasons. First, exercise fatigue may hasten neurological deterioration. Speech drills may be so tiring that speech adequacy for functional use in other situations will be compromised. Finally, speech exercises emphasizing optimal performance can only prove to be a discouraging reminder of the increasing loss of ability. Due to the effects of upper and lower motor neuron changes, the speech of individuals with ALS is classified as mixed dysarthria. This means that a person with ALS may have imprecise consonants, hypernasality, harsh voice, low pitch, reduced stress, uh, strained strangled voice quality, audible inspiration and nasal emission. Work by Yorkston and her colleagues has described five stages of speech decline in ALS. For each stage, interventions are provided to deal with immediate needs and suggestions for future planning are given. Alternative Augmentative Communication Aids AAC aids ranging from light-tech alphabet boards to high-tech microcomputer-based systems that provide speech and writing augmentation offer means for people with ALS to maintain their communicative functioning. Patterns of AAC technology used by individuals with ALS are just beginning to be examined. Differences in use have been found based on such factors as initial symptom presentation, communicative ability and partner familiarity. People with ALS therefore need access to both light and high tech systems to best maintain their communicative functioning.
Thank you, Ram.